Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and I wanted to cover the major new features that are available to you in iOS 11. So first we're going to start with the iPhone, and then the second half of this video will be the new features specific to the iPad. And the iPad gets a huge change compared to the iPhone. So let's start with the iPhone. The first change is to a lot of the different icons on your phone and iPad. Maps has been updated completely, iTunes, the App Store, other changes throughout the whole OS have been changed. The clock has been tweaked, little things here and there just to refine it more and more. Now you'll see that there's a new app on your phone called Files, and Files is a file browser for your device that is compatible with iPhone, Mac, and your iPad. So now this is my desktop folder that's on my iPhone and my iPad and my iPhones. So any device I have attached through iCloud, now of course I can turn this on or off, but anything I have on iCloud I can view on here. So this is a video, a video screenshot or thumbnail that I downloaded before. Uh, these are some that I used in a recent video and those are available for me to view on any one of my devices. So that's a nice little app and you can drag and drop those throughout the whole OS. So when you're on the iPad, you can drag this to a different app and I'll show you how that works on the iPad. Now the next thing is a better setup. So when you've got a new iPhone and maybe you're moving from an iPhone 7 plus to an eight or 10 or an older one to a current one, if they're both on iOS 11, when you're in the setup process, you just bring them close to one another. And when they're close to one another, it says, Oh, I see you've got another iPhone. Do you want to update information from the old one to the new one? And it lets you do that very quickly and easily compared to the previous process. So it's a really nice change. And I'll have a separate video on that completely. There's also a new keyboard in iOS 11. So the keyboard is very similar, but it has a couple options. So if you tap and hold your little emoji key or icon with the globe on it, you can move it over from one side to the other. So maybe you have something in your right hand and you're left handed, you can type this way or tap it and hold it again, go back and type on it from this direction. So it helps you better utilize one hand typing and that's built in to iOS 11. It's only available on the iPhone. Now one feature that isn't available that they said would be on iOS 11, I guess it's pushed off later in the fall is for peer to peer Apple pay payments. So you can pay with Apple pay to your friends through messages or just nearby using Apple pay. I'll demonstrate that when it comes out, but right now it's not available and also iMessages in the cloud isn't available. So that was something that was supposed to be available in this version that they pushed out probably to iOS 10.1. The camera has been updated as well. And within the camera, we have some new live photo filters. So if I bring in my iPhone 6S and maybe I move while I take the photo, we go into the photo itself. If we tap and push, we've got our live photo, but we can also swipe up on it and see some different options. So we can loop that photo. It takes a moment sometimes. There we go. There's our option. So it's looping the photo. We can bounce. And that makes more sense in different situations. And we have long exposure as well. And those are some new options. Now under edit, we have new filters. So if you're into filters, you've got a bunch of different filters that they've added and you've got the ability to also edit a little more easily. So you've got markup in here so we can mark up the photo. Maybe we want to draw on it circle the camera. We can do that. We also have the option to use different photo apps within here. So if we go into more and we have different photo apps that use that, we can edit more easily right from our photo app instead of going into those separate apps and coming back. So that part's been added. There's also an option to scan QR codes. So if you're in your camera settings down here, you'll see scan QR codes. So if you open your photo or your photos or camera app and then snap a picture of a QR code. It will read that it will actually just hover over. It. it will read it and tell you what it is. So that's built in and you don't need a separate app to do that any longer. One of the major redesigns is the app store. The app store has been completely overhauled on all devices and you'll see they now have a today view. So everything is large type, very similar to what music was before. And every day they have a new app. So today we'll scroll down app of the day and game of the day. If we go into this one, it gives us information about the game. Sometimes there's animated photos or videos playing. Let's see if we can find one of those. Maybe it's in this one app of the day. Again, it tells you more about it and shows you how to use it. Sometimes we have games, a, a dedicated spot for games, which is nice. Everything looks a little bit different. And then under apps, a dedicated spot for apps. 
and you saw the updates are different. And then we have search, which is a little bit different as well. So that part is really, really nice. Now under messaging, you can see that the doc is different. There's no titles on each of these anymore. But if we go under messaging, and here we're in messages, they've made it easier to get to your different apps on the bottom. We can go to the app store here, tap this, visit the store, and quickly get into new apps that integrate directly with messages. If we want to do something interesting like a sticker, we can throw this in the text and then just send that along. But it's easier to get to all of those things. If we want something else, we can just swipe and it gets a little bit bigger and we can go to recents. It's a really nice setup to easily get into your messages and send those along. They really want to focus on getting easy access to that app store. Now the new thing with Siri is it's less robotic. It has a whole new voice that's much more clear whether you're navigating or you're just talking to it. So let's check that out. What's the weather today? Okay, here's the weather for today. It sounds much more natural and looks different as well. We can say, what were the last baseball scores? So you've got that as well, and it just sounds more natural. What will the weather be for the next week? Here's the weather for the next week. Sometimes it reads it out, sometimes it doesn't, but anytime it does, it's really clear. And it's got some very nice abilities to translate as well. So it's less robotic, but now we also have the ability to translate something into Mandarin, Spanish, French, German, or Italian. So let's just try something really simple. How do you say, hello, how are you today, in German? Hello, wie geht es dir heute? So we can replay that. Let's try that again. How do you say, hello, how are you today, in Mandarin? So I can only assume that's right. So if you speak Mandarin, please let me know in the comments below if that's correct. But it's got that option for those different languages, and there'll be more to come. And Siri is a little bit more knowledgeable of how you do things now with machine learning so that it suggests news and common things when typing in messages. It can suggest searches in Safari. So maybe you're in messages and it knows that I'm going to say, hey, how are you? And how are things? It kind of gets a little bit more knowledgeable as it learns more about you and can predict what you're going to type. And you can turn all of this off in options, but I really like all of the features and they don't share them back to Apple. So you've got that built in. Now there's some new wallpapers under settings. So let's get out of the camera options, go all the way up to wallpaper. And under wallpaper, you've got some new ones under stills. And you'll see some of these are very similar to the first iPhone. And the iPad has a couple new ones that this one doesn't. And I went over these in a different video. But you've got some new ones in here. And that's pretty much it. No new live wallpapers, anything like that, unfortunately. No 3D touch wallpapers. That part's just not included anymore. I don't know if they're ever going to update that. But right now, it's not in here. Now, under music, they've updated it a little bit so that you can actually search different music with friends and family and maybe share that across with different people. So maybe you want to see different things for you. Go under your account. And under your account, maybe I can add some friends, share my profile with someone. They can follow what I'm watching or listening to or or see right here, find more friends. They can see what I'm listening to and I can see what they're listening to and it will help me find suggestions so that I can listen to something that maybe I might like that they're listening to. So I like that, that's built into music and that's pretty much the only update to music. Now there's something called AirPlay 2 and AirPlay 2 allows you to more easily share different things with your home control and music. So we haven't really seen this implemented yet. Maybe we will with the HomePod when that comes out. But what that does is it allows you to control maybe one room and its volume and another room and its volume. It's built in to your control center, which is all new also. Now the control center is radically different. They've moved it into one page. It's customizable in the settings app and you can 3D touch on every one of these. So the calculator, can do copy last result, uh, do not disturb, which also has a new option for driving that's new. We also have set a timer. And again, this is customizable. So if you don't want these, you can change it up a little bit. And those are in here as well. So you've got different levels for night shift, things like that. 
All of it is 3D touchable. All of it is customizable. I really hated it at first, but I've gotten so used to it that it's definitely worth checking out. And getting used to it isn't so bad. Once you do, it's much better, I think. It just doesn't look as nice, in my opinion. We also have new notifications. If we swipe down from the top, we can see our earlier today view. It looks much like the home screen. You can push and hold to clear all with 3D touch. You can swipe to the left and view or clear. We can also swipe the other way and open. So if we want to open that, we can look at it as well. So swipe, clear, swipe this way, and open. It's really nice and very simple to use, uh, although it may not look as nice as iOS 9 or 10. It just depends on what your preference is there. Now, like I mentioned before, there's do not disturb while driving. So if you're driving, it knows that it's in motion and will stop it from actually displaying anything on the screen while you're driving. And that part is really nice. So do not disturb while driving. You can activate it automatically when connected to Bluetooth. I always use CarPlay, so that's why I have it on manually. But it's a great feature to have, and it doesn't allow you to use the phone. It makes you use Siri if you're going to do anything with the phone. And it's definitely recommended for those of you that get distracted by your phone. You really shouldn't be using it while you're driving. Uh, it's much safer, and definitely a feature I'd like to see on all smartphones built in automatically. Maps has been updated, specifically the navigation, but let's take a look at it. When you're in Maps, it looks pretty familiar, and there are new features. If I search for a place such as services, maybe we'll go to the FedEx Ship Center and it tells me it's 14 miles away and 25 minutes. Now I've started navigation and you can see it looks a little bit different. We have some different options. We have an overview, details, and it also will tell us our speed limit as we're driving and show us our lane as we need it, depending on what road we're on if we're on a highway. It's very nice and it works really well. I've been using it and it's very accurate. Now aside from all of those features, CarPlay has been updated a little bit too. It now allows multiple apps on the left hand side to easily switch between those different ones. It works really well and very seamlessly, but there are still some bugs in CarPlay that I've experienced with things not working properly and that may be related to specific apps depending on what you're using. Now let's talk about iPad and the changes it has built in. The biggest changes with iOS 11 come to the iPad and make it much more usable. So we'll unlock it, and as you can see, we've got our grid arrangement like we did before, but now we have a dock on the bottom. Let me rotate it to the side so we can see it a little bit better. And this is the 10.5 inch iPad Pro, and it works on all of the other iPads that are compatible with iOS 11. So we still retain picture in picture and all our multitasking, but it's done a little bit differently. Now if we swipe up from the bottom, we've got multitasking, We've got our saved states that we had of multitasking. We also have our control center on the right. And it does take a little bit to get used to, but it's really intuitive once you do. So let's swipe off mail, and then the next thing comes in. Keep swiping, and you'll see we have all of our different apps. If I open this up, now we have our saved state of multitasking. We'll go back home, and we're back to where we started. So maybe we want to multitask a little bit. I'll open Safari, and let's swipe up. We'll do that again, swipe up, tap and hold, bring in the App Store. Now it's here and we can just get rid of it or if we pull down, we can bring in the App Store and now we can resize. Maybe we wanna do a new note. So I'm in notes, if I swipe up, maybe I wanna bring something in from Safari. So swipe up, we'll bring in Safari here, we'll resize it and maybe I wanna bring in a photo from this particular website of mine. So I'll just make it a little bit bigger so we can see it easier. Maybe I want this photo. Uh, we can save the image, but I want to drag and drop it to something. So let's tap and hold and I'll drag it over to here and let go. Now I've got the same image from here over in my notes and then I can mark up notes. Now if I want to mark up the note, I can do that and say this is the iPhone. And here's a new feature. Instead of hitting one, two, three or the up arrow, we swipe down on seven and there's seven. We can do it the traditional way, but there's an easier way. Instead of just holding shift or hitting shift and hitting seven, we could do one, two, three, four, five, six. It's real simple and it's very intuitive and you get used to it really quickly. Now within this, as we're using Notes, Notes has some new features as well. Now we've got our notes here. Maybe we wanna mark something up with Apple Pencil. And we can do that very simply. There's new options. We've got a lasso tool. And things will move out of the way too as we mark them up. So if we wanna mark something up here, we can do that. And if we wanna put pictures and text, we can move our photos. It will move by itself. There's just some new options that make it very useful and very really intuitive to use. So we can mark up pictures. 
we can take a picture, and we have a new option to scan documents. So if we have a document to scan, that's now built in. So let me show you how that works. Now I've opened the scan documents and I have this little document here. It's nothing very exciting, but let me put it in view and it will notice the document. I'll snap the picture of the document and you have to drag the corners to adjust. So we'll do that. We'll keep the scan. It adjusts it into a normal document for us. And then even though it's blurry, that's something I can retake later, but you can crop it if you want, change it how it's set up and that's all built in. And then you can just mark it up and sign the document. You can also sign PDFs using notes or the PDF scanner as well. You can use your pencil to just sign those natively all built in to iOS 11. Now there's another feature you can use the Apple pencil with. If you've got the iPad like this, you turn it on and tap the pencil. It will automatically open the notes. So maybe you're in a meeting, you want to use that quickly. You can quickly get into your notes and then start writing your notes. So that's it for iOS 11. iOS 11 has some other features as well. Little tiny things built in all over the place, different icons, different fonts you'll experience. News has been updated to pull news that it thinks is relevant to you in spotlight, all sorts of things, top stories. It learns your information and updates that for you. So there's all sorts of things that are smaller that I haven't mentioned, but those are the major changes to the iPad and the iPhone. I'd love to hear about your experience with iOS 11 in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.